Sure. Welcome, everybody. Happy New Year. Um, so what we're going to be talking about today is Robert Frank and actually uh, a surprise to me, his, his wife, June Leaf, who is a wonderful artist in and of herself. So we're going to start out working, working on Robert Frank. There's a lot to cover. Um, very influential photographer. Um, so basically he was, um, Swiss born. Um, his father was, uh, actually, um, uh, um, they moved from Germany to Switzerland. And I believe that was in the twenties when they did that. He was born in 24. Um, his father was an amateur photographer, but very, very, you know, um, um, good at what he did. He was a businessman. Uh, that's how he made his living. But, but he was really, you know, loved photography. So he kind of gave the, gave the bug to his son. Um, so um, he's really... Robert Frank is one of the most important photographers in America in the 20th century. And his influence is so widespread that you might not even be able to see it anymore in a way because he has been so influential on photographers since then that there are so many people that have followed in his footsteps that you wouldn't even notice it. But at the time when he came to America, um, which was in, let's see, 1947, he, um, he actually had studied in, in Switzerland with, a, with a, um, a professional photographer, you know, did darkroom work for him and stuff like that. So that's where he gained his skills. Um, he came to America in 47 and, you know, really... Um, gained a job as a fashion photographer with Harper's Bazaar, which was a big deal back then. Didn't last long with them, though. He really um, was not a magazine photographer. You know, doing assignments, shooting shots of um, uh, glasses half full of wine was not his thing. Um, so he did, he did a, a few um, projects. He went to England. He went to um, Paris. He took a trip to uh, South America and did photographic shoots in those, in those different areas and, and put those together. He became friends with Edward Steakin, who was a, a very... Um, well-known um, photographer in and of himself. You probably know his work. If you don't, he's worth looking at. And Walker Evans was, was another one of the really fairly well-known uh, photographers at the time. And here we have uh, Robert on the, the left with the camera in front of him and on the right, we've got Robert and June. Um, now, what happened basically is is he um, he applied for Walker Evans was very supportive of him. He was a, he's a, he was a wonderful photographer himself, and he. Um, he had done a, um, a book in the, I believe it was in the 30s, called American Photography. American Photographer, I believe it was. And, and so he basically kind of broke the ground for Robert. Walker Evans helped him to write a um a grant application to the Guggenheim uh, Fellowship, and and through that help, uh, Robert won a 
a Guggenheim. And that, that made him able to tour the country and, and do this project. This is, this is in 1954, 55. Um, America, as I think you all know, was going through a lot of stuff at that point. There was, there was the House on Un-American Activities. You know, the McCarthy era was in full bloom. The, the country was still in post-traumatic syndrome from the war. I mean, you know, we're, we're, we're coming out of a, a very deep and long, profound depression and, and go straight into a war. And the 50s were really a time when, when there was a lot of recovery happening. Um, we, we were in, in conflict with the, with the Soviet Union. And, and so we were trying to put out this, this really bright and shiny um, um, persona to the world of this wonderful United States of America. And Robert Frank came here as a, and basically he was an alien. He was looking at this from, from his own point of view, from the outside. Um, and he saw his, his, his ability as a photographer, as an artist. He wanted to portray what he was seeing. And he was, he was interested in doing expressive photographs. You know, he fell in with a group, you know, basically the beat, the beat generation. He was friends with, with um, Jack Kerouac and, and Ginsburg and a whole, a whole group of folks that were taking a long, hard look at America in a different way. Um, so one of the things that, that, that he really did was look at America from the point of view of kind of an outsider, though he loved America and he adopted this country and he really, he, it was, it was, it was a, uh, a understanding that he brought to this and a compassion that he brought to this that was that was very different he saw the the racial strife he saw the class disparities in the country and he didn't shy away from those many people had problems with this with this his you know the americans were really it was it was a tough tough pull now I'm, I'm actually going to try something right now, and I don't know if I can pull it off. I hope I can. Um, I have a slideshow set up that'll go through the entire um, 83 of the photographs that are in the Americans, and it's just going to flash up on the screen for four seconds for each image so that we can move along really quickly with this. Um, I will come back and delve into some of the images later. So let me see if I can do this. Let's see. And let's see if I can get this started. Yeah. Okay. So these should just flash on through. Let's see if it goes the way I want it to. No, it's not. Okay, so I will push it along. Let's see. I'm not going to say much at this stage of the game. I'm just going to flash our way through this. He did 2,000, no, <laughs> excuse me, 27,000 shots going across the country. And he, decided on these 
curated it down to these 83 shots. These are not the best quality shots. I have better quality shots for when I uh, talk with you about individual pieces.
I just want to mention that if you have a question, please put it in the chat function. And this way, Larry, I'll read it and Larry can um, answer it. Do not raise your hand. Please put it in the chat function, which is on the menu at the bottom or top of your screen. Okay. So. Now I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna address some of the roots of of where he's coming from. What you know, basically, um, uh, the influences that were on Robert Frank going into doing this series. But as you can see, there's a, there's a there's a love affair with the car that's definitely going on throughout throughout all these these shots. Um, and that has a lot to do with how he was getting around. I mean, basically, he was. He was traveling by car across the country. He did three different trips across in different areas. So here we have Dorothea Lang. We've, we've talked about her in an earlier session. Um, she was definitely an influence on, on Robert Frank and on Walker. Well, she was a contemporary of Walker Evans. And, and so, um, you know these these shots were definitely things that had an effect on on uh, Robert Frank and how he was thinking about approaching the the common people of America and and what what the thread is through that. Uh, let's see. Okay, and here are two two pieces from Walker Evans. American Photographs was the name of the book that, that Walker Evans had done. Um, and, you know, Walker Evans actually helped rewrite the grant proposal that, that uh, Robert Frank put into the Guggenheim. He, he, was, he was a great help to him. Um, but you can see how the how this would have influenced Robert Frank and and how he was approaching what he was seeing in America. He was really a friend and mentor. Um, now another profound influence on on Frank was Bill Brandt, and Bill Brandt did. A series of Walsh coal miners. He did. He did a bunch of um, photographs of of, uh, of London at night and things like that. Um, so the grit and the dark, the dark earthy quality of of these photographs really spoke to Robert Frank's heart, and and that this really you know, profoundly affected him. And this is a series done by Robert Frank of the Welsh coal miners. So you can, you know, see the soot kind of mixed into the fix of the, of the photographs. Um, Larry? Yes. Somebody asked in a chat, uh, are these 35 millimeter photos? Yes, that's that. That's a good question, and and basically, um, he um, changed over. He was he was using a um, a three by five or a five by five uh, camera when he was in in uh, Europe. He changed over to a Leica thirty five millimeter Leica, and very light camera. He could take shots really quickly. This profoundly affected how, how he was operating. The spontaneity that you can have, you know, all of those, those shots done by Dorothea Lang were set up. They were, they were posed shots because she was using um, a, a giant camera that took a lot of time to set up. It took, you know, well, five or 10 minutes doesn't seem like a long time, but when you're sitting there, the spontaneity of a shot is gone in that amount of time. So yes, he used a 35 millimeter Leica. And that, that was a really good question. 
Thank you, whoever asked it. <laughs> Somebody else commented about the black and white photos um, uh, show everything most profoundly. Yes. You know, yeah. just because they're black and white. Right? They're very they're very dramatic. And yeah. that's that's one of the qualities of, of black and white photography. It transforms an ordinary situation in a certain way. So here we have, you know, the beginning of the Americans. Okay, this is this is uh, parade Hoboken. It was the Fourth of July, you know. Um, and if you look at these ladies, it's kind of like they're they're blinded by the flag or or set back in the shadows. It's a very interesting idea and approach. Um, a lot of photographers hated Robert Frank at the time. In the 50s, this was like verboten. The stuff that he did was like just, you know, they're out of focus, they're fuzzy, they're, they're off kilter, heads are chopped off, all this stuff. Hated it. They're very expressive photographs. They're, he, was, he was a really wonderful artist. And, and this is where, you know, we, we look at this now and it's like, yeah, they're good compositions. Hey, that's cool. But at the time, you know, in 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 the in the photographer's world, there were certain standards that you held to, and yeah, not so much for Robert Frank. It, and you know, this is again the beat generation. Um, it's it's like you know they're you know looking at things from a different point of view. Okay, here we have uh, a couple of, a couple of shots of the political stuff. And, and basically, you know, the, the city fathers over here, the guy in the back on the, uh, on the, on the right hand side with his, with his eyes closed and those pursed lips and that look on his face of smugness. Oh my God, what a shot. Uh, <laughs> and, and the blovacious character on, on the right with his, with his arms up in the air you know, just letting out, letting out all that steam. Um, it's a really interesting shot with that kind of um, classical uh, head underneath this 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 pontificator. Uh, <laughs> Somebody mentions that it's pretty deliberate. This social commentary. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. That, that he was. You, you see, he came from Switzerland. They're, they were very, now he loved America because we were so out there with all this stuff. And this was in the mid fifties. We were very proud of America at that time with good reason, but there's also the dark side to all that. And, you know, he wasn't afraid to look at the noir you know those those wonderful noir films from the 50s they were really taking letting the dark side of our culture be seen in a way um so that's kind of where he was coming from uh as an alien coming to this country and looking at this stuff Let's see if I can move this around a little bit. um yeah i mean you know the 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 tuba head. <laughs> it's it, these are incredible shots. I mean, in in a lot of ways, uh, it's really unique. Let's see. Let's turn the because I got a lot to cover. You know the the business of. One of the things that he he was he was living in New York for a long time, and basically um, um, he he was in in with a very liberal culture when he was in New York, but when he went out into the into the rest of the country, and you know it was Jim Crow South, he was actually arrested in Arkansas and thrown into jail just for being a little bit odd and having a foreign accent. Um, he spent he spent the night in jail. Um, they they questioned him. He was like kind of, you know, they messed with him. Um, 
So the Jim Crow South was shocking to him. I mean, he he was not familiar with that kind of prejudice in in European culture. It was kind of like you know uh, homogeneous, and this the conflict that was here was really obvious to him. Now uh, this this one, the Hollywood premiere. It's a wonderful shot. She's out of focus. This this glam puss who who we're supposed to be focused on is out of focus, and the the fans in the background are the ones that he's paying attention to. So it's a really wonderful you know piece. And again, this is this is one of those places where oh, um, American photographers, you know the photography. Uh, profession was being shocked by all this stuff. <laughs> Larry? Yes. Somebody uh, also had a question, said that the photo on the left of the um, premiere mm -hmm. reminds me of Ouija's photo of the opera goers surrounded by gawkers. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> <Interesting. laughs> huh? So, you know, again, here, here we are, you know, these, these ladies are standing next to each other, but they're really kind of in two different worlds. Okay, and uh, this one, this one, <laughs> uh, not exactly a happy holidays waitress we got going here. And you notice up, 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 uh, up above there, there's, there's uh, Santa Claus, Merry Christmas. Well, <laughs> maybe not so much for her. And then again, you know, we have the passengers, these these phantoms, these uh, uh, blurs passing by this this woman who's running an elevator, and she looks, you know, she's she's kind of out to lunch. And again, one of the, one of the things that he was that he was just fascinated by and shocked by was the class the class disparities, the kind of you know the family that this that that this child belongs to would not would not embrace this lady who's holding the child in 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 the way that we would want to see it at this time you know she's she's you know this is it's really interesting stuff for him um now really interesting you know the this jukebox thing this 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 crazy ornate machine in the middle of this this crowd of 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 kind of Mo this motley crew in the candy store uh interesting piece and then and then it's a really interesting shot on the left the 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 positioning that that frank must have taken to get this shot in this particular way you know they're they're squinting you know out in a particular direction he must have had the light you know coming in their in their eyes in a way that that would make them squint like that interesting moment so again this business of the car the mobility this is something you know basically um Kerouac um wrote on the road in at this time you know the the sense of of the importance of the of the car and the inter, interstate system and the ability to move around as as young young um people um where we're coming out of the 30s where it was very difficult 
you know, I mean, the, the, the country was, was in really, really dire straits pre-war. And this is a, this is a very new experience in the, in the late forties and early fifties, this kind of sense of freedom, um, in a way. And there's also the commercial aspect of it, the, the, the sense of, of abundance of, of, you know, but it, it is a two-sided thing. I mean, you know, there's this car accident and, and this um, precious object in the front yard of, of, this, of this very plain house. And they're so proud of that car that they got to drape stuff over it to protect it from the weather. Uh, really interesting kind of notion. And there's this other aspect to things, you know, this kind of um, uh, almost religious um, belief in the in the in the car, in the possession, in the in the you know going to the drive-in movies is almost like going to church, okay. You know, and he's got this other, this save, this big save sign over the gas stations. It's like, you know, wow, what an eye. And then there's the evangelist up there in the, in the, in the wilderness, um, you know, and look at the shot. I mean, it's all off kilter. Look at the horizon line. He's got, he just snapped this shot and just, it's all crooked and wacky and wonked out and, and blurred on on certain edges and all that he just lets it stand it's expressive it gets what what he wants it to have in it larry again there was a comment about how important the car was to the owners oh it yeah was the most important possession that they had absolutely absolutely and and that was one of the things it's like you know basically the 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 sense of the sense of of ownership and of of um, the 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 kind of accomplishment of that after after what the country had been through. This is like I said, it's post traumatic syndrome. There's stuff here that that was that was not you know out in the open. It, he he ain't looking at Father Knows Best here. This is not the, the, the image that, that the Donna Reed show put out there on the TV. Um, and, and yet, look at this lady. She's sitting out in this open field. There's so much joy in that, in that expression and in that moment. That, that's, it's, it's a really wonderful piece. And th this one really touches me. And then we have the contrast. We got the mink stall lady. <laughs> uh, he was quite an eye. <laughs> okay. And it, is this is this bar in the way of 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 other people? I don't know what bar you're talking oh, about. Oh, you don't, you're not seeing it. Good. Okay. No. Perfect. All right. That's what I wanted to know. All right. So the shot, the San Francisco piece is like really intense. I mean, you know, he's out there shooting these shots and, and this is one of those moments when the camera can be invasive and, and you don't see that a lot in his work, but this is, this was, and he really got, you know, the, the sense of, you know, this is a, San Francisco, it's a liberal city, but it's still, you know, these people are out there, they're hanging out in the field and, and, you know, what's this white man taking this shot of? What's this all about? Uh, so really beautiful, really interesting shot. And then the 4th of July over here. Again, you know, the, the American flag is a little tattered at the bottom. Uh, a little frayed, has a few patches.
And you can understand why critics at the time, oh my God, they panned him. They thought this was this was like you know he was he was a communist. He was one of them one of them foreigners criticizing this country, and I as I see it, he's just loving what's there, and and having some understanding of it that 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 he he brought to this. It's it's. Um, Okay, and then there's this shot, and this is this one's a classic, and this is on the cover of the American. Um, it really this shot was taken. He was walking the streets of New Orleans, and and he was just taking shots in the crowds. It was it was actually it was Fourth of July again, I believe, um, but he was just taking shots out there on the street. And he turned around and he saw this shot and he captured it at that moment. It's one frame in, in, in the entire role that he caught this shot on. It wasn't like he got chances to take multiple shots. And looking at this, Rosa Parks, I think it, I think it was within, within a week or two of taking this shot was the Rosa Parks incident where she was asked to move to the back of the bus and refused. This is, this is at, that, at that very time that this shot was taken. So, you know, th this, this piece is just like framing each of these images inside these windows, an incredible, Peace. Okay, and we got one more Hollywood premiere and another kind of premiere. Uh, so, you know, Robert Frank wasn't afraid to show, show us warts and all. You know, at this point, this doesn't seem that, that outlandish, but oh, at that time, oh. And now I'm moving on. You know, we're leaving the Americans. We're coming into the influence of, of Robert Frank. This is Diane Arbus, 10 years later, taking these shots. And she went right into, right into the freak show. She was like really very much into going to the gay and trans, transgender um, nightclubs and stuff like that. Um, and then these two over here, at, at Horn and Hard Arts. Uh... <laughs> okay. So um, this is a shot of Jack Kerouac, 1966. Um, um, and Kerouac wrote the, the uh, introduction to the Americans. And I'm gonna read a little bit of what he had to say. Uh, that crazy feeling in America when the sun is hot on the streets and the music comes out of the jukebox or from a nearby funeral. That's what Robert Frank has captured in these tremendous photographs taken as he traveled on the road around practically 48 states in an old used car. And with the agility and mystery and genius and sadness and strange secrecy of a shadow, photographs scenes that had never been seen before. For this, he, he will definitely be hailed as a great artist in his field. After seeing these pictures, you end up finally not knowing anymore whether a jukebox is sadder than a coffin. And let's see how he ends it. He ends it with Robert Frank, Swiss, unobtrusive, nice. That little camera that he raises and snaps with one hand and sucked a sad poem right out of America onto film taking ranks among the tragic poets of the world. To Robert Frank, now I give this message. You got odds.
and I say, that little old lonely elevator girl looking up, sighing in the elevator full of blurred demons. What's her name? An address? <laughs> so, Robert Frank was married to Mary Frank at the time, who is a wonderful artist. And, and the, the sculpture that's in the upper right-hand corner is one of her pieces. Um, they, they were married. They had two children. They were, she traveled with him on some of the journeys out on, uh, on these photographic trips. But in actuality, you know, basically... That's that's one of their son. That's their son Pablo. They had a daughter, um, and they they were both rather rather sad stories, which I probably will get to in a little while. But um, they were divorced in 1969, and um, he remarried June Leaf, painter and sculptor. Um, so here they are together, um, Robert Frank um, and June Leaf at the 50th anniversary exhibition at the National Gallery. This was, this was in, um, I think it was 2009 when, when this took place. Um, but- Well, Larry, I just want to go back yes. to the one you had before. Yeah. Somebody mentioned that the portrait of Kerouac is mm -hmm. so touching and emotional it's yeah. a different kind of America, an innocent America, yeah. that picture. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, the interesting part was I, 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 while I was doing this, I read On the Road. I read Kerouac. Right, I and, know you did, right. And, and it was shocking to me how misogynistic and sexist the whole thing was. It was amazing to me that none of the women in, in the book had any anything other than a, a surface sketch. It was shocking. On the other hand, it was a visionary book. It had some very powerful, almost hallucinogenic images of, of, of America that, that, that he poured out. But it was really shocking to me. I, I was like, Never mind. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, Robert Frank really appreciated the strength of June Leaf and of Mary. Um, though their marriage didn't last, um, June, June and he were together for close to 50 years. So I'm going to move on. We are moving on to June Leaf. And this woman was a total revelation to me. I, I totally missed that there was a show, that a retrospective that they had at the Whitney in uh, 2016. I missed the show altogether. I'd never seen her work before this. And I was blown away. This woman is terrific. This, this is, this, these pictographs were from 1949. She did a whole series of these really wonderful rough collage mixed media pieces um and you know it's very surrealistic but it's very much in keeping with with the times but she's very you know uh the one from 1951 there's a whole series of these pieces you know top lady top banana uh there, there's there's i'm i'm not gonna I'm not going to remark too much about the genitalia, but uh, <laughs> there's definitely a sexual overtone to that Venus of Wollendorf, banana, whatever that is that she got into. And there's a whole series of these pieces. They're terrific. They're really beautiful pieces, beautifully drawn. Um, she, um, she got a Fulbright and, and went to Europe and, and, actually uh, 
got a studio that used to be Picasso's studio, and she spent a year there working. Um, the Coney Island piece is probably the most representational, least surrealistic piece that I've seen of hers. It's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful piece. She's a great draftsman, very spontaneous. Um, her work is, she kind of comes out with these things and she doesn't know what she's going to do when she starts. She's just kind of like pulling the skeins out of her brain. Uh, <laughs> and I, I'm going to try and do a close up on this one. Let me see if I can do a zoom in. I want to zoom in on this because there's so much going on in here. This is really wild. You know, the, 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 uh, the bicycles or the unicycles or the three ring circus that's going on inside her brain. Uh, it's really incredible stuff. And I just love her. I love the, the, the draftsmanship. She's just a really good draftsman. But the fact of the matter is that she doodled these things out of her imagination and they just blow me away. Okay. All right. Robert enters the room, 1973. They were married in 1971. Um, and then you see in the, in the one, the image on the left, um, there's a collage in there of, of Robert back there entering into the room. So she's collaging and playing around with mixed media. And it's, it's, you know, it's very mushy and very fun and really inventive. And, you know, this, this lady on the, on the right, I mean, you know, the, the mad queen riding on, on her, on her pencils, you know, it's almost like they're um, uh, figure skating on, on a compass. <laughs> Okay, and this is a whole series of woman monuments that she did. Um, there's a there's a probably a dozen of these that I saw, and there's probably a heck of a lot more than that around. So it's kind of a combination of mechanical person and imaginary um, um, kind of. Uh, Oh, Rube Goldberg contraptions. Uh, <laughs> Larry, yes. somebody asked, that, did she write because these images are so personal? Oh, she, she certainly did write. She, she, um, and, and actually, some of these do have words integrated into them. Um, you know, look at what she's doing. She's playing around with the, these things are kinetic. She actually, you can actually pump that, that, that uh, um, uh, scroll, you can turn the scroll and, and the thing actually moves. You can pump the, the sewing machine and, and, and have, it, have it move around. Um, quite incredible. You know, Robert envied her ability to just spontaneously come up with these ideas every day. She would just go in there into the studio and work away. Um, and she still does, as a matter of fact. Robert Frank, on the other hand, is gone. He died in, in uh, 2019. Um, so just so fun. You know, I mean, if you're, I don't know if you're familiar with Giacometti's paintings, but, but he used these earthy colors and things like that. So there's some Giacometti references in there. There's also, um, you know, if you look at the, the, the buoyant, playful stuff, it's Alexander Calder did the circus series and all that. He loved to do things like that. So, you know, she was definitely somebody who, you know, she was looking at that stuff, but these are all her. They're really amazing. 
Okay. And again, she doesn't know what's going to come out. She just does these things and, and who knows what, where, you know, where they were going to go, what they were going to do. She's just playing around. I got to keep rolling because we're getting, we're getting there. I could keep talking all day on these guys. Okay. Here's just, what is this? <laughs> I mean, there's a whole story with it, but I'm not going to go there now because we're running out of time and I, I want to keep pushing forward. They're, they're just fabulous pieces. She's so inventive. And there's a self-portrait from 2006. And then this, the mad ball. <laughs> this is a big piece too. It's 56 by 70. Okay. So this is, this is the, the open road in New Mexico and uh, in June. Um, so what, what I'll say is, is, there, there is a kind of introductory lecture on the Metropolitan website. Um, Leaving Home, Coming Home is a 87-minute um, uh, documentary that was made in 2004. It's really good. Great interactions between Robert and, and June, which is really fun. It's really fun to see the... the relationship between them and there's a lot of images in there and basically you know you get you get more of a sense of Robert so this is available on canopy and you know it's it's only about 90 minutes long so it's definitely worth a look there's also a um, interview on the on the um, Whitney website of uh with june leaf with the curator for the the show that she had there so uh uh on on that note i leave you regrettably because there's so much more i'd love to say but, <laughs> well, but larry uh, yes we did have somebody ask um if you would have if you'd like to do um photographer vivian meyer Vivian Meyer. I don't know Vivian M -E -I -E Meyer. M-E-I-E-R. Mm -hmm. I'll look. Okay. Um, in case you wanted to um, have other photographers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Uh, next week, we're going to do um, uh, Mary Cassatt. Um, modern woman. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I think that's it for this week. Thank you all for coming.